All right, moving on to the next team we'll be breaking down today in the Big East. And this is the team that I have finishing in fourth in the conference to start off the 2020-2021 season. And that would be Kevin Willard and his Seton Hall Pirates. And we all know COVID-19 ended what was Seton Hall's best season since the early 1990s. Miles Powell and Seton Hall split the Big East title and were in line for having a really high seed in the NCAA tournament. And watching Miles Powell, it was spectacular. Watching Kevin Willard just develop and rebound from controversy. He's brought these guys to five NCAA tournaments in a row. He deserves a lot of credit for the job he's been able to do with this program. When I look at the 2020-2021 Seton Hall Pirates, that's the first thing that stands out. This is a team that lost a lot. Miles Powell is no longer there. You look at Romero Gill, he is no longer there. Quincy McKnight is no longer there. So those are three very important contributors from the Seton Hall Pirates from last year. So a lot of people are going to say, Zach, if those three guys are not there anymore, how can you pick this Seton Hall team to finish fourth in the Big East? And here's my answer. Number one is coaching. I believe Kevin Willard is... The I would say the third best coach in the Big East. I think he has an argument to be second. Jay Wright is obviously on another level than any other coach in the league. He's won national championships, but I would probably put Kevin Willard at number two. He's been able to do an unbelievable job uh, getting this Seton Hall team to the NCAA tournament. And keep in mind, this program was in rough, rough shape before he was able to get here. So when you look at the Pirates for this year, they have Sandro Mamukalashvili. If you followed the Pirates last year, Mamu got hurt and he missed a, a good portion of the season with a broken wrist. I believe it was like midway through December to early February and the Pirates were very good without him, and I think it took a little bit of time for him to get readjusted back into his role, but once he was there, I think he ultimately provided to be one of the more underrated players in all of college basketball, and now this year, I think he's in for a more clear role. I think you could see him playing the five, playing the four, and I think a lot of people are going to realize that if he was given a legitimate opportunity, if he didn't get hurt last year, Mamu could have easily been a big-time contributor for the Pirates, and I think he's going to be exactly that this year. I think he's sneaky underrated and is really being undershadowed because of everything that went down last season. You look at Seton Hall, they lose Powell, Gill, McKnight. But when Mamu was healthy, he was a guy with size, he could shoot, he's smart, and he can make plays. Seton Hall also last year was better on defense when Miles Powell was not on the floor. I think playing uh, Mamu at the five is going to really open things up for this Seton Hall team on offense. And when they need help on defense, they have the bodies because they could put Ike Anibogu, uh, excuse me, Ike Obiagu, not Ike Anibogu, the, the former UCLA Bruin, uh, Ike uh, Obiagu, the transfer from Florida State, they could put him in when they need help on defense and emphasize on long wings. The other kid I really like for the Seton Hall team is Jared Roden. I think he's going to have another big time jump from last season. This is his junior year. He's improved from his freshman year to his sophomore year, and now I expect him to improve even more for his junior year. I think playing him at the four with Mamu at the five is really going to expand his game. I'm really looking forward to see what he could do. And the question I have for Seton Hall, number one, is can Miles Kale bounce back? This is a guy that is now in his senior year. This is a guy that hit the game-winning shot against Kentucky at Madison Square Garden, probably the biggest win in Seton Hall in the last three, four years. Any Seton Hall fan knows the exact shot and the exact game I'm talking about. So this guy is a former top 100 recruit. He could play, but last year he was super disappointing. Six points per game. 3.7 rebounds per game, about one assist per game, one steal. During his senior year with Miles Powell gone, it is time for Miles Kale to shine. He needs to be better. I want to see him average at least 12 to 13 points per game. He has to be a guy that if this Seton Hall team wants to do well and perform, he needs to be one of the main contributors. The other thing that stands out to me when I see this Seton Hall team is Bryce Aiken in the backcourt. He's a guy that can make shots with to call Molson, the transfer from Canisius. He can attack. He's a capable scorer. And going back to Bryce Aiken, the cool thing about him 
is like Miles Powell. This is a guy that could take over games with his scoring ability. He is able to pull up from anywhere on the floor and can beat his man off the bounce more often than not. In 63 career collegiate games, Aiken has scored over 30 points seven times, and his career high is a 44-point game. When it, With Aiken comes to Carl Molson. This is a transfer from Canisius who spent last season not playing because of transfer rules. He sat out, but he was first team all Mac uh, as a sophomore and was one of the more prolific scorers in the mid-major realm in 2018-2019. The downside is his inefficiency. I get it. He's been a volume scorer during his career. Uh, he's only shot 30% from three, but at Seton Hall, I don't think he's going to be forced to be the number one option, so his efficiency could improve. He could be a dangerous complementary piece to Aiken and Kale, and if this Seton Hall lineup is clicking at all cylinders, I really like the way they fit together. If I'm Kevin Willard, I am starting uh, Molson at the two with Aiken at the one, uh, Kale at the three, Rodin at the four, Mamu at the five, and then having my bench of Obiagu, Reynolds, Samuel primarily. Uh, so I like to call uh, to call Molson. He could play. If not him, though, one of the guys I mentioned was Shavar Reynolds. He's a great defender and he could shoot a little bit. He's a glue guy, and most importantly, he's a guy I think that Kevin Willard really trusts late games on the court. Seton Hall uh, remembers a couple years ago, they were playing a game against St. John's and he really didn't play the whole game. Kevin Willard puts him on the floor and he hits a game winning buzzer beater three against St. John's, Shavar Reynolds. I remember that game vividly. It was a conference opener two years ago. He could really play and I think he's another dangerous option that provides a lot of depth for the Seton Hall team. He's a glue guy. Tyree Samuels, uh, another guy I mentioned, he's a guy that gained experience last year. He's 6'10 and can play small ball five, small ball four as well. A lot of people have asked me, Zach, what is your number one question for the Seton Hall team? And I think for me, it's what's their identity? Because last year, the thing with Seton Hall was this. Going into the season, I was so high on them just because I love Miles Pal. I expected McKnight to, to do well, but they struggled early. And if you remember, they lost a game to Rutgers. And when I say they lost to, Rod to Rutgers, not only did they lose, they got ran out of the gym. It wasn't even close. And I remember Miles Powell got hurt in that game, and there were Seton Hall fans, there were college basketball analysts all over the place asking on Twitter, is Seton Hall going to miss the NCAA tournament? So there were people supporting Seton Hall panicking. And without Miles Powell, what that forced Seton Hall to do is make and create a new identity. And that identity was on the defensive side of the ball. Quincy McKnight was out here locking down opposing point guards and was great, not only on the defensive side of the floor, but really on the offensive uh, side of the floor as well. Romaro Gill was probably the best defensive player, not only in the Big East, but all of college basketball last year. Uh, he was a first-team All-Big East player last year. Seton Hall really was able to redefine who they were. My question for this year is, are they going to be able to do that? They don't really have rim protection. They don't really have an elite, elite scorer who is going to be able to step up and provide Seton Hall with that new identity. The other question I have for the Seton Hall team is this. Bryce Aiken needs to stay healthy at point guard. Is this dude going to be out there all because as good and as talented as he is, he only played seven games last year and hasn't played a full season since his freshman year. And now he's a senior. It's tough because they may rely on him to be their best offensive creator. The other question I've ever seen Hall is this. I mentioned Romaro Gill and how when Miles Powell got hurt, he was one of the main leaders on the defensive side of the ball for this Pirate team. And he was one of the uh, main guys that turned it all around for Seton Hall. Can Ike Obiagu develop into that guy this year? If you remember, three years ago, uh, when o Ike Obiagu played at Florida State, that was a seminal team that made the Elite Eight. They played in the NCAA tournament against Michigan. They were a really good team. Obiagu was a big part of that team. He was all over the place blocking shots. And I think last year, playing behind Mamu, playing behind uh, Romaro Gill, he didn't really have an opportunity to get on the floor as much and as often as he needed to be 
I still believe he's one of the better defenders in all of college basketball and could really block shots. And if things go right for him, he could develop into a big time role player for this Seton Hall team. I think Seton Hall is built around wings who could defend. They're going to need Bryce Aiken to be their lead perimeter scorer. Maybe Miles Kale as well, but I don't think I could trust him. Maybe Mamu could be their overall leading scorer. I trust his offensive ability, and I can't wait to see what Jared Roden could do. Uh, I can't wait to watch him play. Seton Hall is the fourth best team in the Big East to me. They're also a team, I think, that has a lot of possible finishes. They could be you know, fourth, it could be fifth, sixth, seven, anywhere in that range. But I do trust Kevin Willard to be uh, on top of the Seton Hall team and uh, to have them in a good position to make the NCAA tournament by the time the season ends. Like several other Big East teams, it wouldn't surprise me to see Seton Hall finish in like third or seventh. I'll trust Kevin Willard to keep the consistency going and take his team to what should be a sixth straight big dance. And uh, once again, man, I just wanted to say I miss watching Miles Powell uh, play basketball. Th that dude was just criminally robbed, just like so many other players of a chance to play in the big dance in the NCAA tournament this year. So I miss watching that dude play basketball. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to see what Kevin Willard and the Pirates could do this year as an encore.